Um, so let's go ahead and call the meeting to order. Are there any select board issues or concerns? Um, just a question with regard to the next agenda. Are we going to have um, an action item to take official action on the ARPAS taking this ARPA standard allowance? And that's then, a good point because we didn't have a motion last time right no we have a discussion we've had discussion about it it is on the draft agenda okay. uh the agenda hasn't been finalized and written for the next meeting yet but it is on the draft yeah answers my question you did make it uh, you're way up there we're, we're changing <laughs> changing the order tonight <laughs> I like to sit to the right here. Yeah. Uh, okay, are there any other issues or concerns? I do the short straw. <laughs> nope. Okay. Um, did the board want an update on the Holcomb House? Oh, yeah. Okay. Are there any other agenda, agenda items? That? Um, yes, please. So we have the Holcomb House as an agenda item, and we also have the addition. Uh, sorry, the. Um, well, I'm just going to say what it is. The speed limit sign for Sinclair Road yes. was updated to the 25 miles an hour from 35. So that's done as of today. Okay. Whoa. We could take that off the list. I didn't we take, take that it off the list. Next one. Next Four years. <laughs> Thanks. Brian, whoever, it was a matter of pushing yeah. well, Okay. Um, so reviewing orders really quickly. Allegiance trucks, um, heated wiper kit and a filter for two hundred and seventy dollars and twelve cents. Uh, Atco International one hundred thirty seven dollars and fifty cents for winter parts and supplies. Uh, Brasso fuels for town garage storage building mill house diesel tank garage and storage building a total of eight thousand four hundred and one dollars and seventy nine cents of which the following is due from the village. $96.66, $165.45, and $53.88. Uh, Dean Locke for animal control expenses, $13.77. Ideal auto truck parts for oil, $546. Um, Culbert, from Johnson Hardware and Rental, $9,550.80. New England American <laughs> Public Something Equipment Show, professional training, $60. Can I go back just a sec on yep. Johnson Hardware? That's the item that was brought up at the last meeting, the sort of replenishing cover stock. I believe so. Can you read the? It's, it's nine, GF Culvert. 9550 um, Culverts, miscellaneous materials Culverts. I, yeah, that sounds right. Okay. <coughs> Sorry. No worries. Um, New England Municipal something, annual fees due, uh, $5,000 total, 2,500 of it for uh, computer support, and the other 2,500 is due from the village. Office Depot for office supplies, $227.03, half of which is due from the village. Town report expense, uh, $3,202.31. Staples business office supplies, uh, $62.79, of which $46.57 is due from the village. Um, Schitzel, Page, and Fletcher legal services. Mm. For $240, I missed an invoice for staples of $236.90. Um, United Construction Parts and Supplies, a total of $1,155.63. Does anyone know what that's for? It's a, the big charge is $967.08 from United Construction. That doesn't specifically ring a bell. Doesn't ring a bell for you either, Rosemary? No. Okay, we'll look it's that a, one up. It's an eight, so it's a highway expense. It's a highway expense. Right? Yep. Okay, uh, Viking, we'll come back to it in a second. Viking, uh, I assume it's Kives, is how it's pronounced, 
for chains and lights, $807.32. And Vermont Municipal Clerk Training, $30. We don't have the invoice yet for stone and gravel from uh, NATOs or anybody else, but that's going to be pretty expensive. We include that as a, as a planned purchase, though. With yes, we did. Just giving you a heads up that yeah. it hasn't shown up yet. So. so it looks like it's a John Deere Duramax rack. It says hours three thousand one hundred twenty-five dollars. Uh, one. Sorry, three thousand one hundred twenty-five hours. Um, it is the dirt. The John Deere quantity of two. Duramax C rack. A list price of three hundred fifty-five dollars sixty and sixty-four cents. And there's two of them. Sounds like a ladder rack or something. Maybe the John Deere is our greater, yeah. I imagine. I don't think we've well, got the other. Too, isn't it? Where's the loader a cat? I think the loader's a cat. It's a cat. Okay. But Darmax is a motor. Does anyone want to look into that further or are we comfortable with knowing it's a quantity of two? Everybody else. I, I'm happy to. Wouldn't hurt to find out what it is. Yeah. yeah. I don't think there's going to be any any surprise about it. But I'll I'll reach out to Jason and, and send the board an update on what the what that was. Thank you. That'd be great. Okay. Next order of business. Um, <coughs> review and approve minutes for March 30, uh, 21st. Motion to approve. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Any discussion? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Mark? I'm an aye. Okay. Uh, and the minutes are passed. A treasurer's report and review of an approval of bills, warrants, licenses, and any actions. Rosemary? Those are all renewals. Those are all ones. They're all renewals, yes. Is that is Dollar General? Um, did you say liquor or cigarette? Okay. Is that liquor? Beer and water. Yeah. Beer and water. Yeah. Next. Okay. Is that all of the ones, or are there still some outstanding? I think that's that's all. Do they all um, terminate at the same date? Yes. Okay. Um, April 30th. So look. If they're interested. They'll get it in. Okay. Right. I make a motion we approve and issue the standard letter. A motion. Do you have a second? Second. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Are you in favor? Aye. <laughs> okay, no opposition. So, all right, let's have everyone. God, I feel it. The liquor control board. So, is there probably a good place I should sign oh, no, under approved? I don't sign on the disapproved. I'm not a big fan of Dollar General. Do you have anything else, Rosemary? No. Okay. And we're in good shape on budget. <clears throat> the last one. Or the last? The last, yeah. Okay. 
So every month we'll get um, kind of a, where we are actual versus budgeted. And if no, you're really nice and more you want to Excel copy one of Rosemary, we'll help you out. No, I just want to know that we can trust that um, we're somewhere near our budget. Yep. We'll talk about that more for sure. Uh, let's see. Thanks, Rosemary. Plan purchases, Brian. All right. So we do have one plan purchase for purchases over a thousand dollars. You got that as a supplement to the packet. Uh, so it's. Yep, I saw it when you sent it electronically. All right. Um, this is for the uh, Trump Loy for the Ted Alexander Welcome Center. Uh, we are paying half up front and half on completion to Howard Romero uh, to do this. Uh, the, it was the previous board. The previous board saw a basic outline of his proposal uh, with the printing materials that we're going to use and the concept of it, photographs edited to look, uh, edited and placed on there to look similar to a, a train car uh, along the trail facing wall of the Welcome Center. Um. Thanks, Brian. The there was an agreement with the Alexanders, the Alexander family, um, on basically a contract that we approved. Um, that was for the commissioning of the design work, and we basically um, explicitly called out in that agreement that Howard Romero was contracted to do the um, Trump Deloy portion of that work. Um, so I just wanted. To share that and then also Evan shared his thoughts with board members in case you haven't had a chance to uh, see it. Okay, so I just want to put it out there. If I can find it. I think Basically, Evan thought we should approve every photo. For me personally, as long as we provided some general guidelines and nothing offensive or uh, you know, any uh, politically motivated thing or anything like that, then uh, I don't see a reason to approve every single picture. That's one. Thing. So the nude photographs will work for you? <laughs> well, if they're done tastefully. <laughs> Probably not. <clears throat> I know a little bit about them because Howard um, appeared before the Historical Society because he wanted to borrow a uniform and Lois might be able to help me. One of them, I believe, is a <clears throat> 1890s couple, something like that. One is supposed to be a World War II soldier and his um, Bride, significant other. Um, he's dressed in a, in a uh, uniform, and she's dressed in a nurse's uniform. Uh, I forget what the third one was. Remember? Is that a 1920s flapper? There you go. Okay. Thanks for that, both of you. Um, so, if the board so desires, we can approve this. If somebody like make a motion or not. Uh, whichever you prefer. I would move to approve as a planned purchase. <clears throat> I'll second that. Okay. So we have a movement for the first half of the payment, right, Duncan? I'm taking Correct. liberties when your motion. Correct. Okay. Um, as as Brian suggested. For the Trump delay. Okay. Great. And we have a second. I'm Three or four? Yep. Okay. Any discussion? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, and ayes have it. Thank you both all. Okay, next item. Brian, is there anything? There's nothing else new for plan purchases. No, that's it. Okay. 
um, Holcomb House. Let's throw that in there before we get into the planning and priorities. Okay. So I don't have a full report back yet, but the uh, on the Historical Society artifacts and their portion of the Holcomb House was damaged today uh, due to a a spill in the um, the apartment upstairs. Um, it appears that they had spilled enough soda to soak through the floor and make it into the, the space below them. Um, Brian Rolnitis is assisting us with kind of cleanup and necessary repairs. Uh, and that's, that's progressing. Uh, Brian is not interested in expanding his work to cover the roof repairs though. So that's, yeah. as long as we got somebody in the building, we had to ask them, but. Um, do we know what the damage is to the Historical Society artifacts? I don't have a report from the Historical Society yet, but I expect to have one soon. Lois, were you there today? Uh, yeah, I, I was the one that discovered it. Yeah. Um, the, the soda, the society, the um, came down through and landed right on um, Mary Nye's chain. That's a very old story. And I didn't put my hand on it to speak it. When I walked on the floor, they crunched. So then I went to the what, what room was this in? In the parlor. In the parlor, in the parlor right at the corner by the big uh, over here. There's a couple of other spots on the ceiling where it's been leaking. Johnny went up, Johnny came over and he went upstairs and said, it was at least 50 to 100 um, soda containers that were in that room. Mm -hmm. What had they exploded or something? No, I think that they just, they were, he, he said they were in. Uh, a lot of them were uh, McDonald's or cups. And so then they, they weren't completely finished and they left them as trash and they took over. And it could have been going on for a while. Just, you know, get, I don't think it was a whole month because the, the chairs were probably still to mm -hmm. Not good. Yeah, yeah, not good. I spoke to the tenants. Uh, they indicated that it was soda. Uh, and you know that they had been the ones that spilled it and knocked things over. There wasn't any dispute about. It. So they cleaned out the room. They have, um, you know, like I said, I haven't had a report from Brian yet, so I don't. Brian was going to go upstairs and assess what the damage was at, at in that room. In addition, um, how much of that will be repairs and how much of that will be cleaning I'm, I'm not sure yet but they i instructed them that they should do everything they can to clean it up immediately um yeah. i mean have they cleaned up the empty containers and all that the garbage they've they've taken some garbage out without inspecting it i i'm not confident that i would describe it as, as properly cleaned up but we don't know, it sounds like. No. Well, Johnny was planning to take the seven beds that were in the foyer in the bar level. He had put them this trash on Thursday. The seven more bags that were in the foyer, which is blocking the fire up. Johnny had told him that it had to be in Those are downstairs, right? That's what you're supposed to do. Um, oh, thanks for the thanks for the information, Lois, and thanks for the report, Brian. Um, unfortunate for sure. When is our lease up with tenants? The lease is up May thirty first, and we're uh, required to give thirty days notice, no matter regardless of when the lease is up. Correct. Correct. Uh, <laughs> the lease can be terminated at any time with cause or without cause uh, with thirty days notice. Just an FYI, that doesn't mean anything if they don't want to go. Yeah, it, it, it starts a 
another stage of the process. process. Okay. It's spoken in the Okay. Let's pretend it's easier than that, shall we? <laughs> okay. Uh, thanks, Brian. Unfortunate. We'll look forward to more information later. Okay. Planning and priorities. All right. So you have in your packet of uh, what we had done last time we came together last year. Uh, it's a list of projects that we uh, came up with uh, as a board and the number of votes that each one received. Um, you know, our, our plan for tonight is to kind of take another crack at this. Um, you know, each board member and member of the public uh, writing down a few ideas about projects, kind of big priority areas. Then we'll have uh, a round of voting where we can assign uh, assign priorities of how, how important a particular task is for you. Um, in between, we'll consolidate similar ideas and try and come up with uh, kind of unified wording for each of those. Um, some of these that we came up with a year ago could be crossed off, then completed, correct? Um, and the school merger question, that's done. Yes, school merger, that's a good one that to mark off. A lot of these are ongoing. Um, you know, the... Uh, library flood prep, we've made strides in that area, but it's not, I wouldn't necessarily say that it's completed and that we can take it off, but we've made a lot of progress on that with, you know, improvements made to the library itself, the adoption of the uh, memorandum of understanding with the library. And, um, so our, well, since you jumped right into that, I guess I have a question for everybody who's here, which is, does anyone have questions about what any of these items listed are from last year? Could we go for them? Yeah, let's do it quickly. Okay. Sure. I, I would, yeah. I, how did we come, the select board did this? They talked to the planning commission and the all the other? We did it with the member, whoever was here from the public. We basically went and said, um, everybody write down, I forget how many everybody in the were allowed. Room. Everybody yes. in the room was allowed to write stickies of whatever their top priorities were. We picked a number, top five or 10, I can't remember, top priorities and stick them on the wall. Okay. So and everyone did that. And then was we, the planning commission here to? Or, I don't believe that the planning commission was. I don't think so. Okay. Okay. That's a good question. It seems like they would be the people thinking 10 years down the road. Mm -hmm. So you folks and the public. Okay. Yep. Thank you. And basically the way we the way I was thinking about it anyway, and I the way I am thinking about it this year too, is these will help dictate what's on our priority list for um, meetings throughout the year. So if it's bottom of the list, it is unlikely to see the light of day. Because there's a lot of things on our agenda for the year. If it's at the top of the list, we should be talking my view, we should be talking about it frequently um, and acting like we should see progress frequently. Okay. I think that's good. So let's run and through. Sorry, we have, sorry one, one last thing. Yep. After people put their stickies up on the wall, we combined them and grouped them in like areas. And then, and then we used these to vote on them. So you can basically take your dots and load them all on your most important thing, or you can distribute them. You can use your dots however you'd like. And we use those dots to indicate the numbers here. And are we about to do that again? Yep. Well, we've got one public person here. But you one fewer than we did last year, I think. <laughs> yeah, I think last year Sue. Sue came with Lois. So this took a show up. It must have been because some of these had 20 votes. I mean, uh, 
Later, yeah, that's if I get 20 bucks. Well, you, you that's right. Load. Lisa was here too. You, you could have all it. You could load all these. Oh, on one oh, 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 your dot, your dot equals one. Oh. Yeah. Okay. And I think we let Donna vote too. Well, I think I was here. So you were here. I, I think I was. I was just zooming in. <clears throat> we shouldn't let her vote then. She wasn't here last year. I was, okay. I wasn't right. here last year either. Yeah. We'll forget you, Mark. That's so. Fine. Running through what we had last year, uh, the light industrial park was our highest priority. Uh, the light industrial park, uh, we combined a couple into that one heading, uh, but it's kind of anything to do with getting construction rolling and the future of that parcel. Uh, the new website, this was originally envisioned uh, as not including a new host. Uh, this was just an update to our existing website. Um, is this something we could take off now because it is in progress? It's not, not, it's probably not in progress in the way that most people would imagine this coming out. We have a new website host and the website did get some modifications to its uh, it's look and feel, but that was only to make it work. Uh, that a couple of the features we used are no longer supported, so we had to make a couple minor changes to it. <coughs> but a properly updated website is still uh, something that I think a lot of people would like to see. Yeah, you know, we'll have the chance to vote on that and prove, but uh, yeah, I don't, I don't think that we've met that goal. Uh, building maintenance. This Wait, is flood mitigation. We talked about it real quick. Oh, sorry, sorry, I skipped over that one. Uh, flood mitigation. That is, we work that one into cover. Uh, you know, flood mitigation on town properties, the Silver Jackets program. Um, you know, more research and information about ice jams, uh, kind of general flood preparation for us. So that one was not a particular, that was a very broad topic. Mark? Did that include our roads? That did include our roads. So that included ditching and all Yes. That. Okay. And were, were there like specific grant opportunities that we were looking to pursue or? We, I, we hadn't identified anything beyond the Silver Jackets program. What, tell me what the Silver Jackets program is. Uh, the Silver Jackets program was, uh, is a research group out of New Hampshire uh, that works with the federal government that uh, we were eligible for based on the ice jam flooding we had in 2018. Uh, the ice jam flooding we had in 2018 made us eligible for that program. Uh, they came in and did some uh, Additional modeling helped LCPC or helped use LCPC's flood models, and uh, have provided. The, we've received a rough draft of their final report with some recommendations on on both things we might be able to do in between flood stages, and also, you know, how to react and deal with uh, ice jams or something like that happens again. That someone up pretty well there. Yeah. They're Krell. It's part of the Krell. Oh, Krell. Yeah, region, yeah. whatever. Cold regions lab. Yeah. And Corps of Engineers. So, yeah, that's still ongoing. They have done one readout to us on our corridor here. They didn't really do much on Guyon. No, it was really just the Lamoille. Um, so I there think might that would... be some action items that come out of that report? Is that Possibly. Yeah. I mean, the, the, the stuff that we had a few comments from their draft that they, they say they'll provide us with more information about, but I'd have to go into my notes to remember what our comments were. But what I remember from their report, the most effective things that they recommended were um, Kind of what we did that they, they gave a pretty strong recommendation that the mechanical intervention of 
getting something in the river to start breaking it up was, uh, they believed was very effective and would recommend something like that again. I think we should keep going. I think that, well, we'll, it sounds like we need to have a focus on getting everyone up to speed on what's happened with flood mitigation. Yes. And we should keep going on this though. Okay. Uh, building maintenance. Um, this would include maintenance activities on this building, on the... Uh, Basically any town property. Yeah, town property in general, rather than listing them out. Yeah. Financial security. Uh, this is updates on our policies and procedures. Um, we've got, we've made some progress on this. We're out to bid right now for the auditing. Um, once we have that in place, uh, the, lead, the Vermont League of Cities and Towns has hired a new financial consultant who can work with us to help us prep for our first audit. Uh, like that. So she'll help at that stage. Um, we can also engage with her on, I don't know if it was this board, the previous board received a report that Rosemary and I had, we completed a checklist that outlined, you know, good financial practices and policies. We scored very well on practices, not so well on policies. So she'll come in and help us with that also when we're, when we're ready for it. Uh, next up, town village merger. Uh, we have, it's another one we've made some progress on. Uh, we have a subcommittee that has met a handful of times to have discussions. Um, no actionable, nothing actionable out of that yet, but it's, it's proceeding. Uh, next up is the Arboretum. Uh, the Arboretum we've broken ground on. Um, installed signage for it, done some pretty good support work for uh, for building out the, the arboretum. Gravel pit, we have our, gra our current gravel pit is nearing the end of its life. Um, there is some interest in acquiring uh, a property that would adjoin our current gravel pit uh, that we believe would have a future as a gravel pit. We've got a couple ideas around that and we're going to we're continuing to meet and discuss uh, with the property owner, um, you know, about building that up. When you say the pit is nearing its end, no. it was nearing its end five years ago or six years ago. Yeah. So how close are we actually to not being able to get any sand or gravel out of there? Uh, I would say that we're less than five years. Uh, but, you know, I think three to four years is, is pretty, is a pretty realistic estimate. You know, the last few years we've continued, last year we didn't draw out of it, uh, mostly for staffing reasons. But um, before that, as we were drawing out of it, we were changing our, the balance of how much we were drawing out so that we were drawing out a little bit less of our gravel and sand from our pit, purchasing a little bit more, which helped extend the life uh, for an extra few years. Also, uh, Brian Krause was able to uh, open another pocket of pretty good gravel that we didn't know was there, which gave us another year or two on his life. Okay, next up. Branding and marketing. Um, we haven't really made much progress on, on this at all. Yep. Cybersecurity, we've had uh, <clears throat> a few discussions, uh, a training, a couple trainings, and some improvements from our IT uh, support group on improving our cybersecurity. But um, we could do significant we could do better. things with that. Yep. Yeah, there, there, it's another one where we've made progress, but there's still a lot more to do. Uh, Multi-use trails and rec development. Um, this is the projects in and around the, uh, the, the Tatro property, the Talc Mill property. 
economic development, kind of writ large economic development activities. This is encompasses the progress we made about setting some money aside in next year's budget for this task. Uh, it's also could cover, uh, you know, grant seeking and other activities. So this is a pretty wide, uh, wide net. Town clerk plan. Uh, Rosemary has said that she's you know, not going to put up with us forever. Don't believe it. Uh, <laughs> Don't prove me wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Three and a half rooms come. <laughs> um, we should have some planning done. Rosemary has done a terrific job in this role for many years. Uh, and we could we could really be uh, caught in the lurch if we don't have a, a good succession plan in place while we have the, the chance. Should that more properly read town clerk, clerk slash treasurer plan? I think that would be a pretty fair way to, to put it because it's also an essential part of the role. It, seem, it seems to me that we're a lot more at risk if we get somebody in here who's not Rosemary. Um, on the treasurer, treasurer duty side of things. Yep. Mark, you had a question? Did you have discussion under this changing the nature of the town clerk's position? Had not having to be elected. We did. So that was part of this discussion. Yep. I assume that would have to be a vote of the townspeople. But yes. The select board were backing it out that way. I mean, I don't know one way or the other, but. So that's really bad, but. Yeah, I, I I think you're right with the select board, uh, you know, and kind of general backing of that. I think it's something that the, the voters might believe in. Um, you know, personal opinion on it. I think that it's a a very valuable role that we're lucky to have been able to elect such a qualified candidate for so many years. Uh, but it is an extremely vital role for the functioning of the town. Well, the thing is, is that having to be an elected position, you might get anybody. Yeah. We've been extraordinarily uh, lucky and fortunate to have someone as good as we've had in that position right. for as long as we've had. And I think, you know, select board, I'd like to blow our own horn, but in all honesty, I think. Rosemary is in support of it and speaks on behalf of it. It'll pass. Uh, right, that's true. And you know, we, we can think it's a great idea. Rosemary stands up and says, "This is the most stupid thing in the world. It ain't got pass." I'm sorry. And when we had had this discussion, it was going to, in our thoughts, it was going to be a post-Rosemary discussion. Not a train, a transition, a transition, yeah, yeah. Which well, she's I, only, I understand, yeah, yeah. Okay. but we don't want to, <laughs> we don't want to do it after the her successor has been elected, right? Well, true, yeah, yeah. right. <clears throat> well, my, my point is, and I'm sure you've already done this and thought about this, is it's absolutely integral that we involve Rosemary very closely yeah. and any discussions about this, yeah. I, there haven't been many discussions, but there haven't been any discussions that haven't involved Rosemary. Yep. Yeah. Well, let's definitely have a discussion with Rosemary. And maybe she's <laughs> who? grooming somebody <laughs> that, to succeed her. I guess the big, big thing is you're three and a half years out. So you're up for re-election next year. The following year. Well, two and a half years town meeting is when the voters would have the vote. In 25. In 25. And then in 26, when your term expires, that we would appoint. Or a future board. Future board and as we get closer to that <laughs> magic three and a half years, there's nothing to say that if we if the town voted on it, that our first order of business couldn't be to appoint Rosemary for the, sure. you know, for the balance of however long she wants to work. Yep, sounds like we all want to talk about that one. Kayla, let's get it on the priority list. All right, 
Next up, Scribner Bridge. Uh, this also included Rocky Road. Um, Rocky Road has been repaired. Scribner Bridge, um, hoping to hear soon on our engineering grant for Scribner Bridge. Uh, Did I drive? Didn't I drive over there recently? Yeah, it, it, it's open. Uh, we want a, a, an engineering report for uh, making a number of repairs to it. It's in, you know, good order, uh, but it's also an old bridge and could use maintenance. Are we driving down trucks over there? No. We're not. They stop and turn around and go the other way. Think of that tonnage. Well, it 16,000 pounds is positive, or I believe. We could drive trucks over it, and I don't think that we would necessarily. I don't, I'm not in fear of the condition of the bridge, but we're not driving trucks over it. The way the route works out, it's not necessary. Okay. So we're just not. Okay, let's keep going. All right. Next up, the school merger. We're gonna scratch that. Scratch that one. We can Next. scratch that one. Child protection policy. Um, we are doing background checks on everybody who's working with our volunteer volunteers for our right programs. Um, and that's so. different than the policy. Yes. So, what what would be the child protection policy? It would be a policy rather than a practice. We we have good practice around this. It's another one where we don't have we don't have an adopted policy about it, but we are doing you know effectively doing it. We're doing background checks on uh, everybody who's working with kids on behalf of the town. You know, this probably doesn't need to be a priority. We could probably just write something really quickly and make it a policy. Yeah, really quickly. Seem like, you know, do something like that previously and more effectively. Oh, is it our policy? We do a background check. Do we use the same, same system that the public schools use? We work in coordination with the public schools. I'm not familiar enough with the process. I'd have to ask Lisa about that. I'm familiar with it. I spent a lot of my life on it yeah. when I was in the legislature. And, it, and, the, and they just submit the name of the person. It goes for a background check and it comes back yes or no. I believe pass, pass that's- or fail. Yeah. yeah, because I don't want to sit here and say, well, you know, so many souls in part in 72. But this has a lot of this has to do with volunteer coaches and I understand, yeah, I understand that. that child protective services does a background check. Yeah. I'm not familiar enough with the process to know exactly what the but they just say background. They just say yes or no. Right. I believe it's the state. I think it's the state there program. A, I can tell you though. I don't there is a it. criminal justice oh, piece that's but they don't do an in-depth background check. Either. They, they, they do for the purposes that we're concerned about, about, you know, uh, allegations being a danger. Yes. Yeah. Okay. okay. All right. Uh, road maintenance and improvements. Um, this is a pretty wide net for our continued road work. I mean, we're required. I don't understand why that's on here. We're required to do that. I think if we're talking about like mud abatement, for example, something we're not required to do, that sounds a little bit different. I wonder if this was, if we had so many things on the board, we put it in this yeah, title. No, I, I capture believe it. that was the case, was that this was a way to consolidate okay. a bunch of ideas. Um, you know, I believe, like Evan had mentioned, we had a couple, we had a little bit of a discussion about uh, reclassifying roads. We had, yeah, I think mud abatement might have been one of them, but I think we had a couple different topics that we right. consolidated right. into this and maybe okay. we didn't have the best name for it. I gotcha. Okay. Uh, next up, bridge between Old Mill Park and Skate Park. Uh, this has come up a couple of times in discussion. This is the proposed 
pedestrian bridge to connect um, Old Mill Park to the skate park. Uh, sewer service, the expansion of the sewer service. Uh, Meaning running it outside the village or improving the plan? Running it outside the village. We don't really have anything, any role in uh, what the, the village's regular operation of it is. Um, in past discussions, the village has been interested in expanding their service area into the town outside the village limits. So they've got capacity. Yes. We currently have two town service areas. Um, so I assume it would be expanding. Yes. Town service mm -hmm. yeah. It's specifically about expanding out one development area that's been identified as expanding out to Gould Hill area to allow for additional development out there. What area? Gould Hill. That's one of the areas of request that we've had residents asking on Gould Hill who aren't in the village and would like sewer. Uh, there's there's another there's area no too. Up there anyway, so. Yeah, it's about, well, that's, it has been presented as a potential economic development item if we were to get expansion of sewer services and other utilities it would make it more attractive for develop, building development is, is kind of what I was still one on the other side of the I'm on the Clay Hill side. Oh, running it, running it. Yeah, okay. Goes up Clay Hill, you're familiar with that road. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know I know where the last man was. So. <laughs> uh, okay. But yeah, and the select board has generally also expressed an interest in having a smoother operation for individuals who are in or are near the town sewer service area about having a smoother process for approving or denying. Yeah. Well, that's to me that makes sense to have some kind of a policy or process around that because if I'm a developer and I say, hmm, you know, if I buy this land right outside the village, cut it into 40 lots, and you got it, and the village says, let's bring sewer to it, all of a sudden I've got a million dollar piece of property. So it might be something that. Well, we actually have an ordinance and an identified mapped area. So, and we have an ordinance that sets the policy of who yeah, gets in and who gets out. Well, also. yeah, because the village. The village cannot approve connections in the town, and the town conversely can't approve connections. So, but it doesn't spell out what the town is willing to expand to, right? There's no did we logic that? in. I think there was limits or boundaries that were identified in the ordinance. There's a map there, there, there are boundaries defined in the ordinance. Yes. There's also a clause in the ordinance that says the <clears throat> boundaries can be changed by agreement of the town and village. The town and village. Uh, and there's been a lot of discussion about what does it take to get that approval, and that's been that's a big part of. There should be a more clearly defined process for. Uh, and this came the, from the village trustees. Some members of the trustee board. We're looking at they wanted it expanded the ability to go from basically border to border within the town anywhere, mm -hmm. and we we have charged the uh, planning commission to look at this whole sewer service right. and try to determine where it makes sense and maybe where it wouldn't make sense to expand. Okay. So essentially, do we want to dig into this further? Yeah. Well, just thanks for indulging me because I'm just yeah. so as far as I know, it's still with the planning commission. Yes. Yeah. Great. And if they, I mean, they, one thing they should think about is uh, Act 250. Um, you know, act, there's there's case law and Act 250 decisions out there on expansion of sewer service areas, um, and they're not particularly. They would, if you said border to border, that wouldn't fly. You know, if, if, if somebody, like your example, somebody buys a 40 acre parcel out on the end of Hogback Road and says the village is going to run sewer out here, 
Act 250 would look at that and say, no, they're not. Okay, we should keep going. Yeah. Uh, there's more, there's a lot more to talk about that. So if we want to talk about that in detail, write it down as one of your priorities. Well, it doesn't have a very high rank. <laughs> Uh, revolving loan funds. Uh, our, our revolving loan fund is active. We're not getting, we're not making as many loans as we'd like. Uh, I did speak to somebody and set up a meeting next week for another possible business loan. Uh, so that's a positive outlook, but we need, we need to make more loans. Can you share with me the, the maybe I should visit with you sometime, the balance, the history, yeah, I'd be happy it's to been share been kicking with you. around here for a long. I mean, that revolving loan money is could even be before Eric. No, no, no. it came. This is the, the town uh, money. Oh, okay, the yeah, it's not the building. Okay, yeah, yeah. Th this we got two years ago, I think. Yeah. Um, okay. The market. When the market changed hands, in order to change hands, they paid back a USDA loan that they had. And part of the conditions of the USDA loan repayment, a certain amount of the money came to the town for the establishment of a revolving loan fund. So it, it's not that not that old. A certain large amount. Yeah. Uh, Two hundred fifty thousand dollars. Let's try to get through the next handful in the next before seven thirty, if we can. Yes. Through them. Uh, library flood prep, pretty self-explanatory. Employee accountability plan. Um, I think I'd have to have Evan to explain that one. What is it? I, I think I'd have to have Evan to explain that one. <laughs> uh, class four road policy. Uh, I think that employee accountability is what we built, built into. We changed. What did we do? We did something in the, we created a policy race. I forget what it's called. But it was basically giving a escalation of folks to report issues. Thank you. Um, to report issues up so they don't have to go necessarily to their direct supervisor if the direct supervisor isn't part of the issue that they need to report. But they have a mechanism and they understand what the process is for going outside of whoever they report to. We adopted that as a whistleblower and protection whistleblower, policy. Thank you. Uh, and it allows for the employees and the public to report misconduct of uh, employees and elected officials without fear of reprisal. Yep. So I think that actually goes away because I think we have it. I want to double check that we actually adopted it. I was going to say, I didn't, I don't remember I'm seeing sure that in the but I'm pretty sure we did. I don't think it's in the book, but I think we did. I remember seeing the policy, but I don't remember seeing that it was officially done. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah, we were doing trying to finish that one before the budget, and we may not have actually finished it before the budget. Maybe that's okay. More yeah, that's we're rest we're virtually complete on, on that one. Yeah. Okay. Class four road policy. We know where that one is. Yep. Broadband. Uh, broadband development, bringing more expansion and access to the town. Equity, uh, diversity, equity, and inclusion. And snow machines in the village. Are there any more questions about any of these topics? I kind of rushed through the last few, but. Snow That's machines perfect. in the village got no vote. <laughs> <laughs> it was important enough to create a category, but not enough to get votes. Okay, what's our next step, Brian? So the next steps would be for uh, everybody to create, um, you know, I would say between five and 10 topics that you're interested in. We'll then take those topics, see where we can consolidate and come up with a final list of things that we're going to vote on. Yep, so. okay. So we have, let's take five minutes. You got well, stickers and markers. Let's say it's at 35 after, we'll stop unless everyone's done before then with no more than 10 stickies per person. Yeah. And Lois, if you'd like to contribute, there are stickies over there. Rosemary, you have stickies. Brian, you have stickies. Donna, you're welcome to contribute too. too. So the, the goal is that we come up with 
Only five items. Five to ten. You can come up to ten. Come up to ten. Up to ten. However many, whatever the most important items to you are, up to ten. Write them on your stickies and throw them up on that wall. So, uh, how would you uh, how would you rate something like the ATE ordinance that we're in? I mean, that's throw it up there. Should we continue to spend our energy on it? It's not going to be done quickly. Pretty confident in that. Is that something we should spend our energy on as a high priority item? What's your What's your time frame when you say spend our energy? Uh, the year. So the, we, this coming year, it is as long as our current board is, is. practicing right together. As long as we're the current current board, what should our priorities be? And essentially, what my goal is is to take at least the top three. I would like us to see us getting that on a regular agenda. And make sure that we can show progress on those top three. If we do nothing else, we're showing progress on those top three throughout the year, knowing we have many, many other operational things that we're going to have to handle throughout the year. We already have a book calendar to tell you. Um, and things like the ATB, which we didn't rank very highly, but became a pretty dramatic issue for the community. So it's... Yep. So we're going to write these up first. So if you have your top 10, we're going to stick them on the wall. And then after everyone sticks them on the wall, we'll do the organizing, right? We'll put like things together. Um, and then once that's done, we'll all put use these dots to say, this is the most important thing to me. Um, it seems to me this is something like the planning commission should be involved with. Well, the planning commission has, I don't they know, take I guess directives I don't know from us. Rolling. This is more about what's going to be on our agenda. This is about select board. We, we typically give the planning commission a direct to go yeah. and have them do the deep dives. Like stuff. what kind of direction have we given the planning uh, commission? Like the sewer district. We've asked them to look oh, at okay. that. OK, OK, uh, thank Before you. that, we and asked them to look, look at class four highways. They okay. usually go take our direction. OK, so they're not out there freewheeling it. No. Well, they could. I mean, they, they have independent statutory authority. If, if they decide there's an issue they really want to push, they could and bring it to us. So. Okay. Jeff, can I ask a question? Where has the operation of the um, ARPAC money that's supposed to appear in the town and come in? How does that fit into this kind of plan? Um. Well, my view, and you can interpret it different, differently if you'd like, but my view is we know we're going to, going to accept money. How would we want to use that money? If there's a big project we should be spending our energy on, I would imagine that ARPA funding would help to fund whatever some of these bigger projects are. Okay. My view. Doesn't mean that's what we're going to do, but I think that this helps inform that. And I would expand on that by saying I, I totally agree with what you just said, but I think there's potentially an additional component to that, which is establishing a public participation process sure. for that. Yep, sure. And I almost think those are almost two different things. Well, it's too bad we didn't have more public here tonight <laughs> to help us with our priorities. But we should get going so that we have time to get these up on the wall. So one one item per per sticky. Yep. We don't have exactly ten stickies. I didn't count them. So oh, oh boy, you're going to have to count. Man, uh, man. you only got you one. You could have no. <laughs> You may, yeah, but yeah, you may have brilliant ideas that we'll never think of, Donna. Town, right. Town Village merger is that? That's on my list. Well, last guy. <laughs> I mean, we got to decide. Is that? Has you ranked? It? I mean, okay, we, we're going too deep, though. We I just want to know whether that's a first. dead horse or. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, but we had two. You guys are overthinking this. Votes. Overthinking. No. Oh no. You can't I you can't dumb me down any more than I already am. <laughs> <laughs> I 
Oh no, I'm gonna throw up some different ones. You go for it. Is anybody else concerned about decarbonizing our our town? Yeah, I am. That's a great one. Go for it. Yeah. Yes, sure, we can take these three. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Stick a knife in your eye. <laughs> Negotiation between you and her. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Oh, well, that could be good. Yeah. <laughs> you hear that, Beth? What? Even Rosemary said Mark would be good on that. Nice. I think so too. I'm all for it. I'm I'm already the liaison to the library. Which <laughs> <laughs> if you don't need a library yet. union negotiation, it's almost speak, the same thing, speaking right? of that, Beth, like I, I emailed you. Did you get an email from me? I know I got one from you about the library yeah. the walkthrough. I emailed you. I will probably am in your junk mail. Okay, I'll check. Check. I don't remember seeing it. Because you do not know how much I don't know. <laughs> oh, I have a pretty good idea. <laughs> I was in your spot about a year ago. <laughs> what did Donald Rumsfeld say? Don't, you don't know what you don't know until you don't know. Right. I called Rosemary up and I said, are we having a meeting tonight? We just Didn't we just have one on Friday? Yeah, yeah we didn't hear about that. <laughs> What is EDC? Economic Development oh, Coordinator. Okay. I... Which to me goes right with branding and marketing. Rosemary, did you come up with any? Yeah, I'll oh, them up. Okay. You want me to take them off? Yeah, you can. Gosh, you got the same one as I do. I the town wherever the garbage can is. I thought about keeping up anyway. Well, we're busy worried about flooding, flood mitigation, our roads. Maybe we should be concerned about creating more carbon. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So Brian, yep. you emailed me the agenda to this meeting today. I emailed it to you uh, a month ago. Yeah, like two weeks ago. God, I scrolled through and could not find it because Rosemary told me that too. So I thought you had done it before you left on the I, I did. It was, it was it was next to the email regarding our ATV. wonderful ATV ordinance meeting. Yeah, I sent them out back to back because yeah, I yeah, they were one right after the other. I don't know how I don't have a clue how many I've I've done. Okay. Well, yeah. But they're all important. if you got more than write still, a couple more. I still got, yeah, I still got tags. <laughs> it's my one shot. Uh, I right? think you have two more, maybe. Me? Yeah, and you're a Okay. Well, it, yeah, and, yeah. What year is your sewer? 
Okay. So you haven't had any problems starting it. 2016 to 2000. So the creation of the issue with them, um, they sometimes don't start. The Kinnick Kitchens Union District. Is that, I mean, broadband? Is that we got broadly out of it? The car been in the parking garage. Right, right now, there's not a lot for us to do cold. if we have faith that they're doing it. Yeah. If not there's. Impressive. Yeah, you know, we would react to anything they brought to us, and we'd give them some direction. But yeah, for broadly speaking, it's kind of we've assigned it to them to move forward. You know, they're they're doing that on behalf of our residents and residents of all their members. Does she have a key or is that a push button? It's a push button. And. Uh, Beth, did I did I do one for so ATV on ordinance? Yeah, and this is a did. known problem that's been happening. The and ATV ordinance was well. Represented. Either they can't figure it out, or they don't. Maybe I should take that. Lynn Rosemary would have blocked me. Adam Johnson, office guest. The limit has been reached. I'm not allowed. I don't know why that's in there. Try the hotspot. I'm gonna try the hotspot. I figured Tom Johnson guest. I would. <clears throat> be in the top 25 or 30. She's very selective. I didn't think that had a. I don't think it's that long. Like, the, there is a limit. It's not that high. I think what it is is now everybody's got phones. Oh, so, you know, um, when everybody, everybody's phone and laptops and everything else start connecting, that's because yeah, we're hitting that limit. Wow, well, somewhat are, often. Uh, the Johnson hotspot is really fast. I can see. Maybe. Um, <laughs> oh yeah, I am slowed into it. Maybe Beth, I yeah. should put broadband up there. It's my passion in the world, but I don't see us doing anything. It is what we need to. I've got, I've got yeah, broadband. Delicate. Well, no, I didn't do broadband, but only because we have the CUD. Right. Um, <clears throat> okay, we're going to read them off. Okay. We have public service award ceremony. Is this about introducing something new? Yes. Well, it's something we we're we're supposed to have done in 2020. And because of the pandemic, we didn't, but it's it's a state thing recognizing everybody that served over 20 years. Okay. 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 NVU. I did. Anything more to say about it? What about um, uh, how how uh, recognizing the importance of NBU to the community? What would happen if they left, and how we might be able to support the continuation of NBU in some form? Okay, great. Put that in the pipe and smoke it. There it was. Okay, general priorities for federal grants, and then there's other federal dollars. So we all want federal money for it. There's ARPA funds, uh, public process, ARPA funds, specific projects under an ARPA funds category, uh, revolving loan fund, economic development for job descriptions, specifically branding and economic development person, general economic development. So we'll just call this economic development. Diversity, equity, and inclusion. Uh, what about this, Brian? Uh, it's less specific action, more just, uh, I think I got one vote last time. I think it's something that we should be aware of if we have a, if we have opportunities to contribute or improve our diversity, equity, and inclusion. Uh, I think that's something we should take advantage of. But specific projects, I don't have anything in mind. Okay. And I wholeheartedly agree. Me too. Um, town village merger, uh, the clerk treasurer plan, light industrial park, property development, new website, uh, and uh, including a communication portal for volunteer groups as part of the new website. Um, union contract negotiations, labor contracts, cybersecurity, ATV ordinance, building maintenance, 
Uh, and develop a plan for improvement. Yeah, so this is development uh, building maintenance plan very specifically and building maintenance development plans for improvements of the whole house. Um, gravel pit or other options, road and brick classification, continue the road abatement plan, decarbonize in town, multi use trails on a uh, talc mill property. Develop plan for the top property with emphasis on ecology of the land, bridge improvements, and class four road policy. What was the what was the last purple one that you this one? Yeah. Decarbonizing. Okay. <clears throat> okay, Brian, what's up next? Next up, we vote on your priorities. So you have 10 stickers. Um we can assign a different number if you think that's useful, but the idea is you've got a limited number of stickers. You've got one thing that's your highest priority. Um, you can vote all 10 on one. I, you know, if you see a wide range of things, you can vote on once on 10 different items. It's kind of up to you how, how you see these priorities, but things that are important, make sure they get at least one sticker. Are we good with 10 votes a uh, person? Or do you think you need more? Well, if I had 20 in Eric head. <laughs> five, five. Five. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so select board members have green and others have. Orange or uh, pink. I'm gonna switch out my pink ones for orange ones because I think the pink is awfully similar to the pink that's on the. Stickers. Yeah. Yes. Right. Yes. Do it. That's Could it. one of our goals be to come up with ten items for a priority list, or should we should we list everything? Yeah. 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 We actually met. Well, I mean, I think it's the reality is we you can have a list of fifty things, but. You can see how well we did on last year's class. Well, I think we made progress on a lot of things last year, but that's actually longer. Yeah. 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 yeah, there's not very many of these that are single year things that we can close on. So our heart is kind of the same. Mine's on the list, but not different than this. I was thinking of the what's your overall vision, David? If we've got a chance to grab some federal money, uh, and what should we do signal about as our part of it? What we're getting. I was, you know, we're getting our money. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, yes. So, <clears throat> if, if, under my scenario, I did both of these. One was we are required to do a public participation process. And at the end of the day, the select board needs to decide what we spend money on. Uh, and the other is, you know, a specific project. So, so if I'm doing one on this, is it, is it all the rest of the Yeah. When we invite you to we'll kind of combine, we'll go up the heading. Yeah, I Who did bridge improvements? And what, what, what is meant by bridge improvements? Well, where is we? Got the we got the engineering the grant and engineering study out right now to serve us. Uh, I've got Waterman Bridge out for state funding. Um, <clears throat> I've got I want to uh, talk about improvements and repairs for uh, the schoolhouse for I think there's I get bridges in particular uh, are going to take a. Good amount of my 
It's similar to the first year. I think it's going to take up a decent amount of my time and by extension the board's time. So I deserve to acknowledge our approach. How can they not get to it? How can they not get to it? It's just kind of the diversity of the inclusion I want that represented. If there's an opportunity, I think I think our first time on the board for the right guy is Oh, did you? Ben and yeah. Oh, yeah. I think she was the first woman I wrote. Yeah, she was. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, she was. Yeah. Yeah. Do we need more stickers? I know that I pretty much got to vote for the things I wrote, but that's about it. Yeah. 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 This seems really flat. I actually do feel like we should get more cigarettes because it seems like we have so many that have two or three. And you want to fill them up? I think we should fill them up. I, I would advocate exactly the opposite. Focus. Yes. Okay, yeah. Me too. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Like three things. Yes. Look at this short front. How many of them are now? Well, I'm glad to see that. That'd be very disappointed if that wasn't. Yeah. I didn't think I just long enough to do that. Oh, I'm sure it's done. In the same thing with the other version of that. Oh, we thought it was going to be long enough. If you may not. You certainly don't have to do it long I just feel like that's a wasted vote. That's how it really is. Well, because I think they're just, I mean, The problem I have with this is that uh, you know, we're both stating we have to follow through. So if we don't, if we don't follow through on that, we have to we have to prove something back to the board. Yeah, I think so. They will follow through. Yeah. Yeah. Because it's, it's, it's not like we need to decide whether we should merge it. Right. But we need to have the discussion to be able to report back to the voters. Right. That's we that's started with having a preliminary discussion, but then with the ability to make the board budget. Well, so I'm not sure. 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 i Good morning. Oh, Brian, you can still vote. And if I got the pack of stickers. Yeah. Place of the king. Yeah. Are you vote. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I think there are some things we're gonna have a hand or arm um, twisted on a little bit, but okay. So our highest one, two, three, four, five are ARPA funds, economic development, light industrial park, I see a theme. ATV and decarbonizing towns. Interesting. Uh, and, yeah. Sorry, I want to get some of these down. How many on ARPA? Okay, ready. All right. So, can you make two columns? One for select yep. board vote and one for. Okay, ARPA has four select board, one public. Economic development has four select board, one public. Light industrial has seven select board, three public. Okay. 
ATV ordinance has five select board, one public. Decarbonizing has four select board, one public. That was five and five and one for ATV and four and one for decarbonizing. Four. So when we say decarbonizing, are we are at least referring to Mark, since you you describe decarbonizing, what are, what are we are we talking about? Transportation systems, um, heating systems, the full gamut. I, our, our vehicles, our buildings. So re re really, reduction of greenhouse gases. Is yes. Yes. Yeah. 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 For town owned properties, I mean, there are other there are other towns that have energy committees. I don't know. We may have one. I don't know about it. I thought we you. Don't. I thought you volunteered to be the energy coordinator. I probably did. <laughs> Do you have a committee? <laughs> <laughs> Start your committee. I mean, that's an excellent level, Brian. Yep. And Got a lot of ideas for that. Three select board, one public. The merger has uh, one select board. Republic. Building and maintenance has one slot for Republic. When they established it, uh, we should call it plan very specifically. Yeah, Casper has a very active. Um, uh, okay. We don't call that. Uh, <laughs> Public service award ceremony to select board. New website to select board. That that public works. Yeah, I want to think is that is that the um, Secretary of State's? Do they do they kind of prompt us on that? Or? No. One select board. Was it public? I think you can do it every year, but we cyber security always done it like every five years, so it won't put into one time and then one time kind of work personally. One in public award, and are we are we at that five year? Oh, um, we should have done it in 2020. <clears throat> one select board to the public. Okay, this would be a very different board, by the way. I'm scared. Uh, road reclassification, one select board. Does anybody know what that is meant by road reclassification? Yeah, it's about those class three roads becoming class two potentially, um, and potentially other road reclassifications. Also, the um, planning commission has recommended a couple of segments of road go to trail, for example. Um, are there other examples, Brian? Uh, I think one of the big ones is. Uh, recommendation from the planning commission that we consider uh, and I think I'm paraphrasing the recommendation right but that we consider uh, taking a more active role in helping convert class four to class three roads uh, because not for every road but for certain roads especially hydrologically connected class four roads where we have to do a certain amount of maintenance anyway because of the MRGP, the municipal road general permit. Um, if they're not eligible for a lot of grant coverage or, or uh, recovery funds, and we have to do the work on them, if we change them to a class three, they'd become eligible for a lot more state funds. Uh, so if it's a class four road that's hydrologically connected, that we can't convert to a trail, we should at least have a discussion about should we reclassify it. Anyway, so you get the idea. There's a lot of there's a lot out there around yeah. the reclassification. I think that also includes class threes going to class fours if they're they don't serve many residents or or uh, have a lot of public good general public good to them. Okay, uh, you have reclassification as one. One public or one? Uh, it's like board. One's like board. Okay. Uh, 
uh, continue the motivate night plan one select board. Class four road policy, one select board, one public. Okay. Revolving loan fund, two public. DEI, one public. What, what was that? Uh, diversity, equity, inclusion. Oh. <clears throat> uh, the clerk treasurer plan, three public. Well, to use trails, uh, and well, basically, development of the town property to public. There are different votes, by the way, so specifically, um, property. Um, and then bridge improvements, one public. Um, I was just thinking, Ryan, I'm actually going to read off what Evan vote, voted for because I think we have that. Yeah, that is in an email. Okay, Evan voted for light industrial, new website, flood mitigation. I didn't make it this time. Okay, building maintenance plan. Uh, where's that? Financial security. Did financial security make it? I don't think it did. Um, town village, maybe we should to the, the treasurer for that vote actually. Um, town merger. Gravel pit, cybersecurity, economic development. I already said town clerk, the Scribner Bridge, so bridges, and then road maintenance plan. Call that road maintenance, the road reclassification. Okay. So all things said, um, I think that we know that the industrial park is the highest on the list. Does anyone have any yes. concerns about that being the highest on the list? Okay. Um, I can't help but point out the dark decarbonization versus industrial perk. <laughs> <laughs> Just feel like, you know, <laughs> a clean industrial perk. Yeah. Um, Um, what is next on the list, Brian? I think it's probably the uh, ARPA funds, huh? Or economic development. Uh, ATV is actually the next on the list. Oh, ATV is, okay. Yeah, you know, to me, that's just an no-brainer. We're doing seems to me like we we're have doing it over there. Yeah. Yep. It, it's good to have it acknowledged as a high priority item because it is going to take up a lot of our time and attention, <clears throat> uh, whether we want it to or not. So. Yeah, it's then, good to have that high rank. Then the next level is tied for ARPA, economic development, and decarbonization. Right? Yes. Interesting group. Strictly speaking, if we count Evan's vote, uh, economic, economic development. development is tied with ATVs. It's tied with ATVs? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So they would each have six votes. But he doesn't, he didn't know we had a ATVs up there. I think he'd probably vote for ATVs too, well, likely. Yeah. Yeah, he's, he's not here. He is not here. He doesn't have the it, benefit not. of that is true. the conversation that's taking place. And yep. 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 That, that's why I my proxy. We do not have voting by proxy. We don't vote by proxy. So I mean, I think we've got to be a little careful about 
Yeah, I, I don't have him included in the totals for anything. Yeah. I just made a note of. He has a separate count. Yeah. The, so I've got one for the board, one for the public, and one for heaven. In the light industrial park, almost might be the same thing. I think that, yeah, tackling the light industrial park is going to include tackling economic development. And uh, I, was, I was thinking also that getting this economic development person on board is, is going to be a focus. It really, you know. Yeah. That's why I have a job description in there because I think that's really an important. And we don't know what's going to happen with the villages vote tomorrow. Um, if if they vote to support at the level of thirty thousand, I mean, are they going to have their own person? Are they going to share with us? What are the duties going to be? How are we going to? You know, there's there's a lot to unbundle there. If you know. And, and we won't know until tomorrow. One more reason for the initial discussion we had with the two boards was it would not be a shared employee. It would be one or the other and contracted yeah. out, like we would do with employees got sued. To save that whole shared employee issues that we that it did. Yeah, which makes a lot of sense, but it, it all goes to the need to craft a careful job yep. description for that yep. person. I mean, if their vote is uh, approved, that's when the work begins. Yes. Or, or is it approved? I mean, it, it's both forward progress on this is kind of on hold until they finish their vote because that's going to determine one what our one options one. are. And Mark and I are going to be busy on union negotiations, so the rest of you can figure out <laughs> job description. I'm happy to write a job description way over union negotiations. So uh, deal. Yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll take that any day. <laughs> okay, uh, so what's next up, Brian? ARPA. Should we talk about ARPA funds for a second? Let's yeah, let's we'll take a couple minutes on ARPA funds. Um, so we kind of know, we, we had the recommendation uh, that uh, the, our best option for using <clears throat> ARPA funds is to uh, incorporate them as lost revenue. When we incorporate them as lost revenue, that frees us up from a lot of the strings attached to the federal funds. <clears throat> That's VLCT's official recommendation. Uh, that's what the National League of Cities is recommending. The ICMA, most larger organizations are recommending that you take the $10 million standard exemption and incorporate the money into your general fund and use it that way. If we, if we uh, voted that, that resolution to do that. No, we'll put it no. on our next agenda. That's going to be on our next agenda. Yeah, it, it, it's on our, our draft for for the next agenda june no next uh, april <laughs> <Nice try. laughs> we'll see you in two weeks yeah. and to your point mark the um correct me if i'm wrong brian but the arpa funds can be used as a match for other grant programs so when i put arpa arpa projects uh, I, you know, my own personal belief is we should be using those funds to create the biggest bang for the buck that we possibly can in leveraging other funds or grant programs. That's, there, there's one small key to that. And that's that if we chose for some reason not to incorporate it into our budget as lost revenue, there would be strings attached and it would not be eligible as federally matching funds. Well, I'm totally, I'm, I'm totally sold on the idea of yeah of taking the standard allowance. Yeah, we should absolutely do that. Yeah, it, it is it, it, the the power of these this one time money to be a transformative experience for our town requires us to be able to use it as matching funds. If we can't use it as matching funds the scope of the work that we can do with it is greatly reduced. 
you know, if we can use this for a 80, 20 match or even a 50, 50 match, that opens up a lot more that we can do with it. So we absolutely should. We just have to take that step in between uh, where we incorporate it as lost revenue. Yeah. So to your point, Eric, that really ties the industrial park into ARPA, into economic development center. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and not get too deep in the weeds on that, but when if we put that into the current year's budget as lost revenue, obviously we're going to show a very large surplus at the end of the year when the reconcile when the books is done. We will then have to really think about how we craft it in our presenting budget next year, where that money, is, our proposal for that money to be used. And we'll have to really think that through. Yeah. To go to the voters to get their buy-in, however we want. That also ties into another key component. It is not a requirement for us to incorporate it as lost revenue like it is for other funds, but it is still best practice. And I think it's very valuable to us for that reason and others to have a strong public participation in selecting the projects. <clears throat> that it will show up and it have to be voted on in a future budget in order for us to properly expend the money. Um, if we, you know, we have some freedom with our budget, but I, I'd want to get some advice on that before I. So what, what you're saying to me is, the town meeting next year, some accountant in town can read the budget to see we have three quarters of a million dollars extra. We want and to we have. We want to have a plan. We want to have a plan, and ideally, that plan has been well communicated and has buy-in from the public before we go to that meeting where we have to vote on it. You know, that we've yes. had the process where we've had people in, we've communicated with them, people know what the money, where it came from and what we're spending it on and they mm -hmm. believe in our proposal. A, a little of it though, Brian, will be, if you're thinking of pulling down some matching money, finding matching money, then we've got to get this ball rolling along because that can be six months. Yes. Right there. Uh, We've got half of the money right now. We do. And the the money that we have, um, this is also coming up for a future meeting, but the Northern Borders Regional Commission grants are open right now. Um, and I want to send a letter of intent to make a full application on that. Great. Uh, Northern Borders Regional Commission also works well with the uh, Economic Development Authority, the EDA, who has shown uh, great interest in supporting our project as well. It's going to be a tricky, there's going to be a lot of balls in the air on this one. And, you know, I fully support the idea of a public participation process. I think it's an important component and element, but at the end of the day, this board, these five people are going to make the decision about how the funds get spent. And, you know, one, one thing, we'll be a little careful what you ask for. Um, if we have a public participation process, there could be half a dozen competing interests um, out there. So at, at, at some point, that, that's going to be winnowed out and a decision made. Well, there will be, but I mean, I think that we've heard loudly and clearly on the light industrial park that I can't imagine that if we get a group of people in here and light industrial park starts coming up in conversation, that, that a bulk of the people won't sit there and talk about light industrial park just based on what we've discussed. Well, I'd like to believe you're correct, but <clears throat> I'm I'm pretty sure there'll be some competing ideas. There always are, yes. What, that is true. What the highest are. priority should be. I, I think to your point, Dr. Miller, is that it would be nice if we could coalesce and sell an idea to the public. Mm -hmm. As we've done a lot of work 
we're here representing you. This is what we think. If you have other ideas, that's important. But yeah, it'd be nice if we were knew about it. Yeah, and I think at, at some future meeting we have to talk about what that public participation process is going to look like. What you know, what our expectations are for doing that, and whether we have a you know a survey or it's a, we need to, we need to discuss it, decide what it is, and kind of implement that. Okay. Another thing, future I'll agenda. Yeah, another thing I'll mention about the light industrial park. Um, again, having a cash match makes us much more competitive for these grants, but there will be some room, presumably, for us to match some of the work in kind. So we might be able to have some additional funds after this project is complete. So it, it's, we won't necessarily, if we use the money well, we won't necessarily sp spend it all on the first project. We might be able to roll this into multiple projects, use the seed money for, a, if we're lucky, two, three, four developments. Another aspect of the ARPA piece is, you know, we're only talking about the portion of the town cut. The village is getting four hundred and fifty thousand um, dollars of their own. Should we have, and, and we need water, sewer, and electric service to the park? Should we, you know, should we at least have a conversation with the trustees about the importance of the industrial park and? Them perhaps contributing some of their ARPA funds towards needed infrastructure in the park? I, I think it's a worthwhile discussion. We should have it and, and they should hear it. But um, correct me if I'm wrong or if I'm right, but I, the appearance I've seen is they're using their more money more tactfully than strategic. They've got quite a bit of it allocated to their budget to balance, uh, to balance the budget, reducing the amount of big rate for taxes. So I'm not sure how much they got left and a lot of the rest of it, they had already slotted as a way to pay for their building that's got the mold issue. So I'm not sure how much money they even have left over after all that discussion. But I thought their mold issue was, wasn't that like a half million dollar? More than that. So their money's gone. Um, okay. So I think everybody has ideas around ARPA and no, we can put it kind of top of the agenda. A question about timing. Would we have to put it in this fiscal year's budget or could we roll it? into the next fiscal year's budget? I wanna do a little bit more checking before I give you an answer on that. I'm not sure. I had wanted to bring it into next year's budget, <clears throat> um, but with, with the deadline that they want for us committing to the, uh, to the lost revenue, I'm not sure if that's still gonna be possible or not. What is the deadline? Uh, end of this month, this month. I think you're right. It's April 30th. Okay. So even though it would physically go into this fiscal year's budget, we won't have to show it and deal with it until we're presenting fiscal budget for next year. Because it'll come in and show us yeah. so much surplus of money. It, it'll show as excess yeah. from... <clears throat> FY22, when we are proposing the FY24 budget. Right, because we'll be in. 23 yeah, is 23 already in passed. The middle of our town meeting. Well, we've only received, we've received the first half, and then we don't get the second half until July. 
I think you're right. And so half so, is going to be in one budget year and half is going to be in another budget year. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah. so Brian, uh, I need some help with the accounting on that. I'm not sure how to handle it. Uh, do you know anything about that, Rosemary? What's that? Do you know any more about what Brian is saying? Stuff like her um, should really go into a separate, not necessarily a bank account, but a separate fund. Mm -hmm. It should be mixed in with that general fund. Yeah. Okay. That makes total sense. So we should probably plan to have a motion to set up a fund, also, it sounds like. Yeah, I'll get it and never have that in its own fund. Oh, you already do. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, it, it's one what we do with it after we recover it as lost revenue that is I'm I'm confused about at least. Uh, what happened on a meeting in two weeks? Yes. So we we have to vote on that. Yep. Yes. Do you want to vote on it now? Or can we not because it's not one it was on, the, on the agenda? That's why I asked first. We we still have time, I think. Yeah, we're still good, aren't we? No, I mean, the, we're, Brian, we're fine for meeting on the 18th and, and having the vote. Yeah. We, we, won't, we won't throw anything off about our scheduling with that. And it, it should be about a three minute vote. Yep, or one. <laughs> yep. Okay, speaking of minutes. Can I ask a quick question? Sure. Yep. Is there a time limit on could be um, put together for the for the folks in, in town to have a sense of what's going on. Yeah, I think now all we hear is we all these government complaints here. It's, yeah, mumbo jumbo. It's yeah. Clear. Yeah, it, and the 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 morning the April thirtieth surprised me too. Honestly, that so much of what we've heard about this is that the funds don't have to be committed until. Rosemary, you're calling it's like 2020. 2024. Yeah. 2024 and spent by 26. Yeah. Uh, but if we're recovering it as lost revenue, so they don't need to be that deadline is then. much earlier. You know, that's two years earlier than we were planning on. It sounds like it doesn't even have to hit our budget until 2024 then, if that's when you have to commit it. But if it well, if we have to commit it now as lost revenue, Okay, so I hear you. It's confusing. Okay, got it. Yeah, it's confusing, and this deadline surprised me because it seemed to conflict with other instructions that we've received on how to handle the money. Uh, okay, oh, we'll get. Okay, so let's to your point. I think we need actually more than just a timeline of things. I think we need a timeline, and also we need one sheet, not more than one sheet, and it needs to be really clear about what we know for deadlines and also what our plan is for the next three months. What do we need to accomplish in the next three months and when and why? Okay. Um, so if we could get that, that would be great. And I think that would be uh, help inform all of us and then it'll be easier to maintain. We'll just keep a three month rolling plan. Um, we should at some point, I don't think we're quite there yet. We can do the motion and all that next time. But um, at some point we should Um, think about not just the three month rolling, but also the long term. What's the through 2026? What does our plan look like? But let's get three months under our belt first and get that built out. And then we can expand on it for longer roadmap milestones. Good. All right. Uh, so if there are any more comments on ARPA funds, that kind of takes us through. ARPA, do we have anything on the next most popular? Sorry, I just want to say one other thing. Yeah. I realize that I'm talking a little bit abstractly. In terms of like building up that three month rolling and then a roadmap view, the roadmap view doesn't need to talk about what we're spending the money on. It just needs to talk about what milestone we should hit with the funds at different stages along the way. Um, because understanding that we should have that public comment and have it be really clear that that's what the intent is. And let's get that in that roadmap. Like we need to have that public comment by end of June or whatever, I don't know what the date is, but whatever the date is so that it can inform whatever our next milestone is and we're in good position and everyone understands what that really means. 
I don't disagree with what you're saying. My my only caveat is um, it's probably going to come up in the next conversation about economic development. Maybe I'm jumping the gun, but um, if we hire someone, yeah, I think we should hire someone as soon as we possibly can. I think we that begs the question of what is the job description. Yep. So that's going to drive to some degree you know, some of our discussions. And some of what you're looking for may well be what the new economic development coordinator gets tasked with. And Brian's workload might get lightened a little bit by the hiring of that person. Sure, totally agree. I think that's true, but also we don't have money to hire the economic development coordinator until our FY23 budget starts on July 1st. We've got a decent Trust amount me. of. Oh, that'll come fast. Yeah. But we've got a decent amount of work to do in between now and then. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, I think that I can, I think that there's a reasonable amount of work that I can do on this now without overburdening myself, knowing that someone's going to come in specializing in a task like this in the future. And if, you know, if we want to get that up and running, if I remember correctly, uh, seed money to hire a position such as a community, uh, community economic development coordinator is an eligible expense for our funds. So we could conceivably use yeah. some of our existing ARPA funds. I think we need to be careful that we don't confuse ARPA with economic development. And while I agree they're closely tied together, I don't think that the economic developer should be directly associated with understanding the ARPA fund usage. I think Brian already does that. And I would be more comfortable with him keeping that ownership and having the economic developer talk about economic development planning that we could use ARPA funds for. Or to your point, we could use to help pay for economic development, sure. Um, but I just want to make sure that we don't jumble them all together when we're talking about them because they are different enough. Uh, so it gets back to job description. It does. I, I really would like to think about the job description of this economic development person. Mm -hmm. And I would also add why. Unless somebody has an economic development person in their back pocket right now. Yep. Yep. Good luck for this whole year finding someone. There's, there's not a lot of people working around looking for work. Well, oh, we we want to until we develop the job description and circulate. Right. Yep. So let's. But I, 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 I gotta say I, I'm not sure I agree with you, Beth, and, and I'm one vote, you're one vote, but. To me, the core of an economic development coordinator is dealing with grants and programs and making them happen. That is true. Brian, you know, I think I think you're right in, in as much as saying that, you know, Brian, um, to me it's 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 a um, it's gonna require both people and okay, the expertise of both people, you know, to make make things happen. I, I think the economic development coordinator can be a great sounding board and vice versa. Sure. Yeah, yeah, sure. Of course. The benefit of the economic development coordinator is, is one person who has a focus, focus. on the Jewish property, the Apple funds, whatever. And when their focus is there, we're not going to miss one of those balls during the year. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that's really important there. Good point. I, I hope that this person will really help us draw that one way. And yeah. it should, and should. When I think about what Lady did, and I think about um, the money that's sloshing around in the world right now. Yeah, there's a lot really not a bad time to have somebody really, you know, even if they're not on the system so this year. You're gonna, I mean, that lady retired. Yes. That's kind of an awkward concept. Okay. Um, so 
just in the, for the sake of time, is there anything else that anyone wants to specifically talk about in terms of priorities? We haven't talked about all five of the top yet. We talked about ARPA, we talked about economic development. Um, we talked about late industrial, ATV ordinance. I think we are headed down that road fast and furious. Yep. Uh, the next highest one is the decarbonization. You know, we do have, that fits pretty well with our building plan. Um, we know that we need to do some pretty significant upgrades to the uh, heating at Town Garage. Um, you know, heating and everything at this building is something that is a little bit farther out, but we're interested. Um, and and I, I mean, I just, we can start thinking about our, our transportation, our vehicles. I don't see no greater way to get out of the gate, but. Yeah, the village is getting a lot of pockets out. And, and all I can say is I remember when the first electric cordless bill came out, and now I have all of it in one, you know, it's coming. Mm -hmm. And if we can. You know, if we can do our part, we're a small, small, we have a tail of carbon, but we actually, all the electricity the town purchases is through the solar panels, the company, uh, uh, Green Lantern, Green Lantern oh. that has field down in Cambridge. Yep. Well, this is, they got a lot of KDR on us. Oh, nice. But, the village wouldn't win for this on it. So they're, even though, you know, half of these lights, maybe they're coming from the solar panel. The other half coming from the solar panel. Uh, that's a lot. The village didn't win. Well, they want to sell us their, you know. Um, so, I mean, that's a really good point. How many people actually know what the. Nobody. Yeah, nobody knows. So, how do we market this? What? Nobody knows that we're getting solar energy to energize this building for our lights. The, the town is some somebody you must make that policy. Oh, half, half 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 half. Half. Yeah. They came with a proposal we, we, as a select board voted for it. Yeah. And the trustees, I think it was a joint meeting. The trustees decided not to. I think it was around it was around 2016. It was one of the first things that I did. It must be because. We had the proposal. Yeah, you had the proposal, and, and I helped hone it and get it finalized. So, okay. So those are the top five. The top five, um, I think, so I started the annual, like, things we should talk about every month for Slack board. I'm going to make sure those top five hit our first meeting, first meeting of the project, right? Our first meeting of the month. Um, so that we just have them coming in and rotating through. We'll spend a little bit of time talking about <laughs> each one. Um, and if there aren't significant developments in one, okay, for one month, <laughs> two months, uh, what are we gonna do about it? Uh, will be the question we should have for ourselves. Brian, you'll send that half out to us. Yep. So we can try to stay there. You can do a set of, uh, like- Yeah, I can just make an update on the- uh, Records. And if you could build out some of the, like, we need to keep the sticky notes because there are some things that are a little bit more ambiguous and we talk about them at a high level. I think we need to make sure that we put examples in that, that table to be clear about what the card said. Yep. Um, but anyway, we'll do that as just a regular practice. And then um, for the remaining items, I think some of those other items we have listed out are going to work their way up to, we have to do some of these anyway. Um, so we'll see them in regular operational discussion. The gravel pit. Like the gravel pit. That's right. Yeah. Like yeah. the class four yeah. road policy. That's pretty much. Yeah, yeah. that's almost the Town board work. I mean, those mm -hmm. discussions probably will be back on track. No, I, I think a lot of these are, uh, it's, good to have them recognized as a priority because they're going to take our time whether we want them to or not. So what happens to last year's list? 
Uh, Did we just create a random list? We created a new yep. list for the board. Yeah. Yep. That's an old board. Yeah, old board. <laughs> this looks like a pretty old, well, not all of us. Okay, what else? Do we need to do anything else? We talked about priorities. Did we miss anything big? You're like, oh, we didn't talk about this, and that is a real problem. Well, the only time we really can make progress on any of these items is the once a month work session. Mm -hmm. Right. The regular meeting is all of the regular business. So, it, so which week of the month is our work session? The first. 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 first, first hour. Hour. This the one. first and also it doesn't mean it's the only time we can do it. We could. Like, no, not me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, but we could have like owners, we could each take one of these and say we're gonna try to push it along ourselves or see if there's other community members who are interested in talking or helping. So I want to put in a uh, I'm not volunteering. But necessarily, but but one of the things one of one of the things that's up there that didn't get a lot of extra um, uh, stickers is NVU, um, yeah. and I you know I think that's kind of tied into economic development oh, and you know, a whole bunch of other things, um, and I, I think it's important. We're gonna have NVU talking at our next meeting. We have a guest coming. I think is John coming. I, I'm not sure if John's coming. I'm in contact with the uh, chancellor's office. Okay. So we're getting the, the state chancellor of the state college system. So okay. we'll go bring them in a little bit. My understanding, just from what I'm hearing through the grapevine, is, um, it is, while it's been very high stress, it's particularly high stress right now. And um, I think us inserting ourselves into their world at the moment would be a lot. Um, but I agree with you that it's critically important. I, I, I don't, yeah, don't get me wrong. I don't want to insert myself, but I, I would like them to be, I think it might be, it might be even more appropriate for someone in the village to be involved, but uh, I would like them to know that there's a contact person, you know, on our board if they need, sure. you know, if they feel like they need help or assistance or, We'll go to Mark's number. <laughs> you, you couldn't see Eric, could you? <laughs> I was just pointing at me. Yeah. I mean, they have my number. Yeah. So yeah. I, I'm, I'm in contact with John. Not terribly often, but yeah. Well, if John knows. Just, if you can reinforce the, the yes. thought process that I think we're all very much in support of and want to do whatever we can to support them. Yes. We have an economic development coordinator. Yeah. <laughs> they actually uh, paid a third of the salary. They paid, yeah, they paid really five thousand dollars towards Leah's salary every year for a while. Interesting. Okay. Um, but I think your point's a good one. And yes, we will we can reiterate that when they're here next week. Yeah, uh, I, I, you know, it didn't make it very high on the priority list, but that's sort of an example of oh, some of those things are on there. They might still have one pilot you know, priority. Kind of rise up on our list. Yeah, yeah. If we lost pilot, think about that. We shouldn't lose it when the state doesn't even contribute to it. That's my opinion. <laughs> Yeah, well, if the college isn't there, though. <laughs> oh, yeah. 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 <laughs> okay. Um, I think that we have our list. Good job. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks, Brian. Okay. Thank you all. I think we, uh, any other business that we missed? We get to adjourn. That's best. Okay. So adjourned. Adjourning. Meeting adjourned.